Hey everyone, uh, welcome to our Fight Club lecture. Uh, I'm only gonna do one lecture on Fight Club um, and I need your help with this. Um, I'm gonna try to just set up some things you might wanna think about before you watch the film. Um, some things to watch out for throughout the film. And then I wanna just leave you to your own devices. You have my 8,000 viewing questions. Um, and so I, I actually started doing some other lectures on this and I was just doing way too much. I was answering every single question and going crazy. So what I need your help on is how you guys wanna watch the movie. I'll talk about what the assignment is in a few minutes uh, and you'll read that document. But what are you interested in? What questions do you have? What would you like me to help you out with? So what I'm gonna do is when I look at your discussions, I'll make sure I either make videos for you or I'll just type in some responses and see where you guys are going and then maybe guide you if you need that guidance or just keep my fat ass out of it. I'm sorry, <laughs> just keep myself out of it and let you guys sort of do your thing. I hope it's okay that I'm sort of dressed down today. Um, it's cold in here and I'm not feeling that well and I'm tired, uh, so I just wanted to be sort of warm and comfy. I hope that's all right. All right, let's jump in. Um, Fight Club, 1999 film based on Chuck Palahniuk's novel. The novel is much more complicated and strange in a way, but the film has its own sort of beauty. One of the main things I want you to think about when watching Fight Club is, on one level, it's the same movie we've already watched twice now. American Beauty and, and uh, Shawshank Redemption, think about it. Both narratives about individuals trying to sort of find their way through a meaningless world and trying to find meaning in it in some way, usually doing some pretty extreme things to find that meaning or create that meaning, if you will. Also, they all have voiceovers that are really uh, significant to the plot and the structure of the film. Um, so there's lots of things. Then you probably start thinking about, oh, yeah, the sky becomes important, at least the first two films. Um, uh, I don't want to go too far into this, but hopefully you sort of figure out what I'm talking about a little bit. Um, the question for this week, the, the essay I'm going to ask you to write, instead of working about ideas, uh, themes, I'm asking you to think about cultural work. Uh, and I, I talked about this earlier in an earlier lecture. It's kind of complicated and strange, but really think about it. What is it that the film tries to do? The main reason I'm asking you to do this, the ideas of Fight Club, the themes of Fight Club, um, are convoluted and complicated, which is great. Um, and they purposely eat each other up. I don't think there's a single idea that you can say Fight Club as a film is definitely trying to say this. Because within five minutes, it will give you a contrary point of view or a way to think, yeah, if you follow that philosophy, you're going to kill somebody. Or if you follow that philosophy, you're going to become a terrorist. Um, so the film really complicates what it seems to believe in. And so instead of thinking about what it means, I want us to think about what does it do to us? So the film's gonna manipulate you, it's gonna, it's gonna play with you, it's gonna take your hopes and your fears and hopefully your desires and things that you're disgusted by and, and entranced by, and then flip around your perspectives. Um, so we're gonna look at not does, what does the film mean, but how does the film work and what does it do to you? Does it inspire you? Does it confuse you? Does it make you ashamed of something? Does it make you excited about something? Does it make you angry? And then if so, specify what and how. So we're gonna be thinking about uh, the composition of the film uh, in terms of uh, visual design, okay? So when you look at the essay assignment I've given you, you're gonna look at composition, mise-en-scene, or montage. Those are the three things I want you to look at. So either look at how the shot is, almost think of each shot as a photograph where you have an, um, a photographer who's like, putting meticulously every single image in the shot so that it comes up as a piece of art or maybe as a comic book, a comic book panel. Because um, so many shots in this film are designed that way. And there are too many to talk about. Um, one that comes to mind that was very shocking to me the first time I saw this film was some of the shots in Marla's apartment. I won't get too specific, but you have to sort of think about every, people putting every single object meticulously in certain places in that shot, in those shots. Um, why are those things important? Are they supposed to be shocking, um, et cetera? Okay, or, um, so I'm thinking of two things. I'm talking about two things right now. One is mise-en-scene, which is, of course, how everything is sort of constructed in that shot itself, the actual physical things that were in the actual set. And then the composition of the shot, which is, um, once it's been filmed, what do we see on the screen and how, Things like sizes, um, shapes, colors. So we were going to see a lot of shots of Edward Norton and Brad Pitt or Jack and Tyler. Um, 
How are they both dressed? What colors are they wearing? Can you see their eyes? What are they both looking at? How is their hair done? Uh, what, where are they? Are they in a basement? Are they in front of a, behind a convenience store? Are they um, inside of a house? And then what, what do we see in the shot? Almost think about it like as if we didn't know what a basement looks like. What colors do we see? What shapes do we see? Um, how might those things influence us in understanding the work that this film is doing sort of in our heads, in our hearts, in our guts, etc. And then montage, uh, we talked about this a little bit before. You know, it's just a sequence of events usually tied together with a specific song. I think I mentioned later on in the, in the um, actually essay assignment, the, the montage of the violence that we see where there's a homework assignment that people have to go do to start a fight with a stranger. Um, so the sequence of events gets played out together. So find one shot to look at its composition, find one shot or sequence where we see, where you can analyze the mise-en-scene, or one montage to analyze. And then of course, what you're gonna try to do is say, man, I think this is what the cultural work is of the film, and this is how that composition of that shot, the mise-en-scene of that sequence or shot, or this montage helps us sort of figure that out. Last thing I wanna say, um, don't let the film reel you in. The film is a snake oil salesman. It's a car salesman. Nothing against car salesmen if you're a salesperson for a car. But do you know what I mean? Like, it's there to manipulate you. It's there to make you believe things and then kind of be like, sort of pull the rug out from under you and say, you know, yeah, I actually just made you believe X, Y, and Z. How, how do you feel about that? Is that okay that you believe those things? Um, so I'm trying to be a little coy right now because I don't want you to watch the film. But don't trust the film is, I guess, what I'm saying. Trust that the film is smart enough to manipulate you, make you believe one thing, and then pull the rug out from under you and make you believe something else, and keep going, okay? So you're going to see something called Fight Club. Think there's going to be a bunch of rules. You probably, if you haven't seen the film before, you've probably heard, you know, the first rule of Fight Club is don't talk about Fight Club. The second rule of Fight Club is don't talk about Fight Club. Um, think about what those rules are you know, you'll find out what Fight Club is and you're gonna, some people really believe in Fight Club. There's something really powerful and important going on here. Think about how that works. Maybe don't buy into it 100% because then you're gonna work, run into Project Mayhem, which has its own rules um, that seems to go against Fight Club. And then you're, you're very confused as you're going through the film. So let it confuse you. Let the character of Marla Singer really F you up while watching the film. Um, <laughs> I think at one level, this is her movie. Um, and on one level, she might be a normal everyday person who gets into a horrible relationship and doesn't know how to deal with it. If for those of you who have seen the film, that will make sense, um, etc. Go back to the rules of Fight Club, for, just for a second. Uh, the first rule of Fight Club is you don't talk about Fight Club. We think that means you're not supposed to talk about this to other people. I want to argue it means something else. Uh, the idea of Fight Club inside the film is that we talk too much, we think too much mm -hmm. how do you experience sorry my phone's going off how do you sort of experience um something without language how do you get out of that part of ourselves to experience something else um so the idea of not talking about fight club might not necessarily be just don't talk about it to other people it might be don't f and talk about this if you talk about it you no longer have the experience go experience something without words and see what that does and then maybe the second rule of fight club don't talk about fight club means don't talk about it to other people too. Okay. So just some uh, initial thoughts. Please go through those questions. Um, find some questions that you think might be important for you and bring them into your conversations this week, etc. Let me know what you would like me to talk more about regarding Fight Club and have fun with this wild, strange ride of a film. <laughs>